the outer expression is also incomplete. So it, that Bhagavad Gita teaches us finally that there should be a beautiful confluence, beautiful harmony of the spiritual values and the external expression of this spirituality, what we call materialism. Materialism should be the expression of spirituality. Otherwise it will get destroyed. We will destroy ourselves and the world around. If our actions in the world arise from disturbance and confusion and sorrow and pain and fear and all sorts of things, then it will create disturbance in the society. Society will get destroyed. So both should go together, hand in hand. Then only there is beautiful uh, harmony in the world. We can create uh, heaven on earth as though. Because the inner world is taken care of by Krishna and the outer world is then expressed through Arjuna. But who is driving Arjuna? Krishna is driving Arjuna. Arjuna is not walking alone. Krishna is one who is driving Arjuna. Then the, there will be greater charm and beauty in the world. So this is very important. See, uh, materialism itself is not a bad thing, but it, when it has got the backing of spirituality, it is good. Our worldly progress, if it is devoid of values, then it is very bad. But if there are values, then it will create joy and harmony in everyone's life. In present times, we are neglecting spirituality and it is creating a lot of disturbance. However much we may progress outwardly, the more we progress, the more dangerous it becomes. More uh, disharmonious it becomes. So both this should come together in a perfect harmony. Then only there is proper policy. That is itself is called proper policy. Dhruva nitihi. Policy, see for every action, for every country, for every governance, there should be good policy. And this policy is the best, where Krishna and Arjuna are together. Don't separate them. Don't separate Rama and Sita ji. Our Ravan tried to separate them. He took away Sita ji who represents outer prosperity and prakriti. But then it became a destructing factor for him. So, enjoy the world. I, uh, I mean, uh, what you call, let there be prosperity outwardly, but be firmly rooted in spirituality. So there, this is called a good niti, dhruva niti, firm, good policy. When this policy is there, there is all round prosperity. Bhuti, hi. bhuti means vaibhav. Uh, sab jage, uh, what you call, uh, uddhar and uh, um, I don't know what word. Huh? Prosperity only, I think. So all round prosperity, all side, huh? it's not just prosperity means sabke art mein mobile phone, not like that. All around proper prosperity, people will have food to eat, education, medical facilities, all sorts of things, no gender bias, no confusion, no uh, injustice anywhere. Everyone is taken care of properly. That's called prosperity. Prosperity doesn't mean that very rich country. All around, the mind should be prosperous, the heart should be prosperous, the policies and the thinking should be prosperous, not bhikarikita thinking. All people are prosperously thinking, rightly thinking. That is called prosperity. And when such prosperity is there, then only there is all around success. Vijayaha, everyone is successful. There is win-win situation, everyone is benefiting. Not that one becomes the you know, exploiter and the other gets exploited. Not like that. Every factor, every faction of the society, including the animal, birds, plant, all of them benefit, all of them win. So win-win situation. And Shri, he, and there is real wealth. Everyone is wealthy. Inside, outside, everyone is wealthy. There will be wealth in the life of all beings. There will be victory in the life of all beings. 
there will be prosperity all around when we have this firm policy. What policy? Bring Krishna and Arjun together. Not Arjuna who has been down, but the Arjuna who is holding, wielding his bow and arrow, who is ready to fight, ready to execute. Such Arjuna and Krishna, not Mauna Krishna, but Yogeshwara Krishna, who is expressing the glory of spirituality. When this both this come together, then there is all goodness. So this is a very beautiful uh, summarization of the entire uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita also, the, and also a guidance to the society. The Bhagavad Gita started with this beautiful shloka, Dharmakshetri, Kurukshetri, so that the first word was Dharma, and here the last word is Mama. So Bhagavad Gita teaches us Dharma, Mama, Mama Dharma, what is my Dharma, what is my, my nature, what is my essential nature is being revealed to us in this Bhagavad Gita. So this is the most uh, beautiful, one can go on and on, but in a limited time we have uh, studied this Bhagavad Gita. Now we will read the Sankalpa Vakya. Om Tatsaditi Srimad Bhagavad Gita Su Upanishad Su Brahma Vidyayam Yoga Shastri Shri Krishna Arjuna Samvade Moksha Sanyasa Yogo Nama Ashtadasho Dhyayah ah, Om Tatsad is the indicator of that supreme reality. Thus in this Srimad Bhagavad Gita, which is Upanishad. Bhagavad Gita is 18 Upanishads. Brahma Vidya, this knowledge of Brahma is revealed in this Upanishads. Yoga Shastra and also the science of yoga, of practice. So theory and practice, both are there in Bhagavad Gita. In the form of a dialogue between Krishna and Arjuna. So Sri Krishna Arjuna Samvada, Samvade, and the name of this chapter is Moksha Sanyasa Yoga. Moksha Sanyas. So because it explained the term Sanyas and Tyaga and through which we can attain that state of liberation. Ashtadashodhyayaha. This is the 18th chapter. 18 also is a very beautiful number. So it represents, it, numerically it represents the, the totality where one is that supreme and eight is his prakriti, ashtadha prakriti. Together is the display of this whole entire uh, creation. So thus concludes this uh, Bhagavad Gita. We will chant the first verse because uh, our study of Bhagavad Gita doesn't get concluded. We have to keep studying it again and again. So let us chant the first words you repeat after me. Om Shri Paramatmane Namaha Atha Shri Mad Bhagavad Gita Atha Prathamodhyayah Dhritarashtra Vacha Dharma Kshetre Kurukshetre Samaveta Yuyutsavaha Mamaka Pandavashchaiva Kimakurvata Sanjaya Om Tatsat so by the blessings of uh, Pujya Gurudev and Pujya Guruji from whom I learned Bhagavad Gita, I had the opportunity to learn uh, all the scriptures from our Guruji and I also got that opportunity to learn 
Bhagavad Gita directly from our Pujya Gurudev. So all the chapters I have heard directly from him and he was the master of Bhagavad Gita. And not only he taught but he lived each and every word of the Gita. So it was a great opportunity to learn. But uh, we also, uh, after listening, we have to keep contemplating and sharing whatever we have learned with others. So I got this opportunity to uh, contemplate on this Bhagavad Gita uh, uh, many times actually, but every time it is like a new experience and um, it benefits a lot. Um, it benefited me and I'm sure it has benefited all of you. And um, what you call, um, so this is, a, this, is, this is like our sadhana that we study it and share this knowledge with everyone. So I invoke the blessings of Pujya Gurudev, Guruji on all of us and I, I dedicate this uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita Pravachan which I have uh, delivered for past so many months on the feet of Pujya Gurudev and Pujya Guruji. Om Tat Sat. Again, I thank all those who have worked uh, hard to make this uh, uh, yajnas possible. Uh, because uh, so many people, their help is required and their cooperation is required for making this thing happen. So all our Chinmay Mission members from Delhi, uh, everyone who is, I won't take names of each and everyone, but everyone who has uh, directly, indirectly cooperated and um, helped in making this event possible, I invoke the blessings of Pujya Gurudev on all of them. Even this recording has been done and um, for all this, a lot of uh, hard work has gone behind them. So I really am very happy and thankful to all those who have worked towards the successful completion of this Gita Jnana Yajna. And last but not the least, as they always say, all of you who came to listen to this Bhagavad Gita is really uh, because of you only, it uh, became possible for me to speak. And, uh, and the, the, the listeners and their enthusiasm brings that enthusiasm in me also. Because if you, if you find someone sitting there with a morose face and all and not interested and all, you cannot, the words cannot come out. It will not come out. But with all of you, with so much of enthusiasm and interest in listening and you came uh, in spite of all the obstacles might have come in your way, but still you came regularly and heard me. So it is a great uh, inspiration. So I also invoke the blessings of Pujya Gurudev and Guruji on all of you. May, may you imbibe this teaching, may it go deep into your heart and transform you and may you attain the goal which is indicated here in Bhagavad Gita. Om Tat Sat Tathastu. We will uh, conclude now with a prayer and then we will do Aarti of uh, Bhagavad Gita Aarti. And then we will, uh, before you leave, you also take prasad, uh, something to eat also. <coughs> huh. Some uh, other announcements are there. One is that uh, you know about this, the winning way. So this is a three days uh, important program starting from 9th. And I will be giving talk every day from 11 to 12.15. So you please come for not only my talk, but the other programs also. So I learn, I love, I serve. I will be talking about how if we lead a very, uh, uh, what do you call, awareful life, 
just living our life in a natural way, we will be able to progress spiritually and attain the final state of enlightenment. So these are three talks. Then we also have other programs. And on 31st December, we are celebrating a special, uh, this, uh, this uh, welcoming the new year. So in the evening, 10 to 12, we will have Vishnu Sastanam Puja and some other interesting program. So you come for those that program also. Now we will. And our next, next Yadnya, uh, that also I will have to tell. So next, see Bhagavad Gita, as I said, is the essence of Upanishad. And uh, the teaching of Bhagavad Gita and Upanishad itself is called Vedanta. So we will have talks on some of the important works and uh, literature on Vedanta, uh, including the Upanishads. So we will start from February. Uh, some important uh, Upanishads like uh, Mundaka Upanishad, Mandukya Upanishad, Katho Upanishad, Kena Upanishad, Kaivalya Upanishad. Then also I will take uh, some uh, uh, Prakarana Granthas like uh, uh, maybe Upadesaram, Tattva Bodh, and uh, there are this Dakshinamurti Stotram, Drugdrishya Vivek, and uh, Aparokshana Bhuti, and uh, Saddarshanam. So many wonderful texts are there, but they are like uh, not one text, big one, but uh, and they will be like uh, graduated also. But even if you miss one or two, you can still come and benefit from any text which you study. So that this we will start from February. So first February we will meet. In between also we will meet. But for this talk we will meet on first February. I chanted Purnamada? Okay, first we'll chant the Purnamada. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate 